Have you ever thought about how some things, regardless of all the changes that go on around us, technology is changing, the, the, the way we do business has changed. How many of you have shopped and bought something online in the last two months? Yeah, all, just about all of us. Ten years ago, we wouldn't have thought of that on the whole. So even though things are changing at a, at a fascinating pace, there are some things about business and jobs and employment and life that remain pretty constant. What are some of those things that you think, yeah, this remains pretty constant? Bill, Bill that's right. <laughs> Death and taxes, that's right. I mean, you, you got them all. They're going to be there. But the way we pay them has changed. But it's my wife and I, are, I've been paperless for about five, three years now. My wife and I are trying to go paperless on our finances, and it's been a big adjustment for her because she is a detail person, and I'm not. So she's learning, and I'm learning as we go. Anything else that's pretty constant, in spite of lots of change, something that's pretty constant? Be brave. Anything? Customer service. It's essential, isn't it? And almost everybody would tell you customer service is dead. I, I don't think it is. I think it's just, it, it's, it's been ignored in large part. So, Another thing that I've noticed that remains pretty constant in the job search is the way we handle applications. Anybody here ever been responsible for doing the hiring? Anybody? So you, you, this may ring a little more f familiar with you than with, with other people. The way people get resumes in for a job certainly has changed. You, you don't just walk in and hand somebody a resume anymore. Matter of fact, you can hardly get to the decision maker. You, you may, you know, what are some ways you get, you get your name in front of people now? What are some of them? You, you send an email. What else? Social media. Social media, which 15 years ago was not an option, but now it's a main option, a primary option. What are other ways? Job fairs, that's right. That's still some face-to-face, -face, but it's not like it used to be. It, it's a little bit different. You usually don't have the decision maker there. But the bottom line is, no matter how we're getting our resume or our portfolio or our CV, whether it's internally through our company, if we've applied for a promotion, or whether whatever, we know that at some point it comes down to this. Stack A, stack B, stack C, doesn't it? Now, it may be a digital stack. It may be a file on somebody's computer instead of physical pieces of paper like it used to be. But there's stack A. That's the stack we all want to be in, have our resumes in, isn't it? Or our sales proposals if we're selling. Because you're going to get a call back if you're in stack A. They're going to say, this is somebody that really interests me. If you're in stack B, you may get a call. But if they call you and you don't return the call, they're probably not going to pursue you. They may, they may not. You're going to have to overcome some sort of barrier that they per or perceived barrier to get moved into stack A. And then there's stack C. Stack C, you don't have a prayer. You're not going to get a call back. You're probably not going to get a letter. Y you'll be lucky to get the time of day. And we don't want to be in stack C. So we're all clamoring to get into stack A, aren't we? Whether we're looking for work, whether we're selling something, whether we're trying to land an appointment, whatever. We, we, want to end in stack, we want to land in stack A. And the most basic part of that is our personal introduction. You know, that old first impressions are last impressions. You only get one chance to make a first impression. And what, ha what I've viewed and observed is that we have somehow blown past the introduction, and instead of enjoying meeting new people, it's either something we do because we have to, or it's something we're really uncomfortable doing, or we try to sell ourselves on a single introduction. I had a person in this class that was a, it was a 12 week class that taught all this, and his problem was he tried to land the job in his first introduction. So it would go like this Hi, I'm Dwayne. What's your name? Cameron. 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 Let me tell you something. I went to this, and I went to college, and I did this, and I used to do that, and I did that, and I did this. 
And Cameron would be looking at this poor guy going, what did you just say? Because he was, he was abusing the introduction. So here's what we're going to do. And I know you don't like this. Nobody likes doing anything where you've got to get out of your comfort zone. But get up, find somebody, and introduce yourself. All right? So just rise, shine, and introduce yourself to somebody. All right? Go. Go. All right. I did the exact same thing. What'd you do? It worked. I didn't introduce myself, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm Dwayne. Yeah. Yeah. Good to nice meet you. To meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you. I'm Dwayne. Yeah. See there? Now, I thought she'd forgot to turn the mic on or something. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> um, zero, when you do this, means that was really awkward. And five means, no, nah, it wasn't too bad. How was it? Five? Raise your hands. Come on, vote, vote. Zero means it was kind of awkward for me. I wasn't comfortable with that. You may go three. You may go, so four, five, okay. On the whole, we get a little nervous when we have to do that, don't we? Because it's, it's, it's different. I, I have found that if we can just tweak that introduction and make it mutually beneficial for both of us, both parties, it changes the whole tone of it. Think about this a minute. If I walk up to Cameron, I go, Cameron, how are you? I'm Dwayne Burks. I'm a chaplain at the Y. Nice to meet you. What have you, what benefit have you taken from that? Anything? I know your occupation. Yep. I know what role you play in yep. the community. But you really don't know anything about me. I know nothing about you. There's been no benefit to me other than to get my name out there, which is what we think of in networking. You know, networking, we believe, is we want to get our name in as many places as we can because we want to get to Stack A. And again, Stack A can be resumes, it can be sales proposals, it can be requests for dates, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever your Stack A happens to be. But what if we tweak that introduction just a little bit and we, we go to this model? You introduce yourself by saying who you are, then a brief, same amount of words, what you do, and then instead of saying, you having a good day? It's good to see you. What's your name? We close it with an open-ended inquiry. Now, what do I mean by open-ended? Anybody know? Open-ended means they can't answer the question with a simple yes or no. They have to give you more than a yes or no. You know, how many of you have teenagers in your life? Anybody? Or have had? You don't ask teenagers anything but open-ended questions. <laughs> you know, how was your day today? Would you have a good day? Yeah. Was, was it really good? It was good. Yeah, so what would you do today? What would you do in first period today? You know, you, you have to, you, you got to get them to talk. So it may look more like this. Good morning, I'm Johnny Jennings. I'm taking a class down the hall. We just stopped for a break. What brings you here today? You see how that opened it up? You expose yourself a little bit. You're out of control of the conversation now. You've given control back to the person you're meeting. But now you're about to unearth and uncork something valuable in another person. Every person we meet has an amazing story. Every person. And we sometimes forget that because our story has taken precedent in our minds because we need a job, or we need to make a sale, or we need to get to our next meeting, or we need to do this, or we need to do that. Listening is, bec is becoming a lost art. So here's my question for you. First part's pretty simple. Second part's pretty easy. What are some open-ended questions you could use to close your, to move your introduction to the next level? Other than what brings you here today, give us a couple open-ended questions that you could kind of put in your, your repertoire. So, hi, I'm Johnny Jennings. I'm taking a class down the hall. We stopped for a quick break. How could you, what would be the next good sentence that would, you would be comfortable using? Maybe ask, like, how many semesters have you been here? Yeah, how long have you been in school? That can give you one, one syllable answer. 
but it will open the door up a little bit. Or so, what are others? What are others that you you would say I'd be comfortable asking somebody that? Great question. Great question. So if you're with a group of people and you all know you share a common major or you, you, know, you say, um, you're studying, and they go, sociology. What made you choose that? What, what was the interest level? And there's this genuine interest. And a lot of it does have to do with the relationship. Are you willing to invest a little bit of time in the relationship? And we're talking now about very brief introductions. These can be done waiting for an elevator. These can be done standing in a, in a line. My son-in-law hates going out with me anywhere because he's not a people person. He would be happy just to kind of do his thing. He, he's, he's, he's just not a people person. He's like, you talk to everybody. I'm like, well, everybody's different. I have a habit that I always do, but I, I've lost both my name tags. When I wear my name tag, I wear it upside down. And I do that intentionally. Because people come up to me and go, sir, your name tag's upside down. I go, I know. I, I'm Dwayne. I do that so I meet people. Tell me about yourself. And I get 30 seconds of this rich interaction. Now, I will tell you, sometimes what I do when they leave is I grab my phone and I write down, that was John Smith, and he works here. I want to remember that. And I met him at Wendy's. On, and I put it on, and I, and I have that. You say, well, how are you going to use that? Well, I'll show you in a few minutes. I'll show you some ways you can do that so I do want you to practice if you will so take a second think about your introduction using this model who you are what you do and an open-ended inquiry and somebody practice on me just go no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> come on practice do this one. good morning Good morning, my name is Novella Cruz. All right. I'm taking a class at Jackson Community College. Yep. What made you decide to teach this class today? Great, great, great. That's perfect. You know what you usually get when you're the speaker? You never get a question like that. What you usually get is you get somebody that rushes up to you and they want to tell you something. And you're going, slow down, slow down, slow down. And that, I understand that. But by, by switching to this model, you're going to set yourself apart from 95% of the people out there. And the difference is going to be not in what you're doing. You're still introducing yourself. But you're doing it with a genuine interest in the other person, a mutual benefit. You're going to learn about him or her, and he or she's going to learn about you. And that, that is a valuable thing. And the temptation, though, is to go from that and to go back to the old way. So, so we, we have, have a tool, and we'll tell you how to get to it later um, at the end, where you can practice this. You can practice this. You can actually record this, send it to me, and I'll give you some feedback on it if you want to practice it. We, we have that set up online, and it's, it's a great tool. So, but the question becomes, okay, I still need a job, Dwayne. I still need to find work. I still need to meet a lot of people. And it's easy to fall back into the old habit of networking instead of really connecting. And it's easy to take this model and say, I'm Dwayne Burks. Uh, I, 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 I'm here because I need work and I'm looking for a job. And uh, Tell me where I can find a job. Well, that's an open-ended question. But is there any mutual benefit in it? Probably not. So if you get the introduction down, you've learned that, you've taken something valuable away today, and that's good. But let's build on that. Let's layer on that just a little bit and talk about this. Let's say that you are indeed looking for work, and you're doing the things that we talked about. You're sending an email or emails. You're going to monster.com. What are some other things you do to really find work? Temp agencies? What else? So we have emails, temp agencies, what else? Ask people you know, which is perceived to be networking. And it can be if you just do that to connect to find work. But if you connect to engage in a relationship, then it becomes a connection and a, and a mutually beneficial uh, relationship.
So let's say that you're doing those things, and you get up on a Monday, and you've just lost your job for whatever reason, or you decide, I'm going to change jobs, and you start on a Monday, and you send an email, you send 10 emails, okay, and you call three temp agencies, and you talk to two people. How many action steps have you taken? Ten emails, three temps, two people. What is that? Fifteen. You've made fifteen attempts, fifteen steps, fifteen action items. Now here's the question. In order to get a single face-to-face -face interview, would you have to do ten of those action items? This is just to land one face-to-face -face interview. That's all you want. Somebody to sit down with you face-to-face -face and give you an interview for a job. Would you have to do 10 of those action items, 103 of those action items, or 273 of those action items? So let's vote. How many of you say, I think you could do that in 10 action items? Okay. How many say, I think I could do that in 103? How many say, I think it's going to take 273? Well, if you checked or guessed 273, you're right. You say, how in the world did you get that number, Dwayne? We taught this class for two years in 12-piece 12, 12 segments, and we interviewed 110 of the people who took the class. And their numbers showed that if they were sending out resumes out by email, applying online, making calls, networking, the old-style networking, that just to land a single face-to-face -face interview, they were having to do 273 of those action items. And these were people from unemployed to underemployed, from unemployed to gainfully employed. There was a pretty good mix there, 110 people. 273. Now think about that. That's a single face-to-face -face interview. Where well, are you going to get a job offer on the first interview? Usually not. So if you need three interviews, you're looking at almost... 800 some action items just to get where you might get a job offer. Now let me ask you, how is that bearing out for you? If you're sending resumes out, if you're, if you're making phone calls, are you not getting, are you getting a lot of response or are you getting a minimal response level? What are you getting? Minimal? Minimal? There, there's, there is a model that will show you the, the basis, the basics of which we'll show you today, that can build around that. And this, these actions, become part of a bigger plan. We can help you build that plan after you move to the next step, if you want to do that. You don't abandon those things. You don't abandon the emails, the monster.com, the, the connecting with people. You don't abandon those things. But they become part of a pie, as it were. And you will actually, if you do this according to the way we, we have it modeled, you will build a pie of all the actions that you can do to, take, to, take a, to get a job. And then you will say, this piece of this I'm just not comfortable with. I'm not going to go to temp agencies. And you take that out. Or this piece I'm just not comfortable doing. I'm not going to call on anybody that, has, that, that is blood relative to me, a family member. I'm not going to do that. You take that piece out. But then you have a pie of the things you're willing to do. I'm willing to send 100 emails a day. I'm willing to make 12 phone calls a day. I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do that. You set yourself up a plan, and you work through that plan. And as it says, to fail to plan is plan to fail. And I think of it in terms of, of an airline pilot. I have a good friend who is a pilot. He teaches pilots. That's what he does. He works at a university in Florida. And I talked with him, and I said, Chad, tell me why you have a flight plan. He says, if you don't have a flight plan, you don't have any business getting, behind the, getting in the cockpit. And in the job market, the job search market, the career search, if you don't have a plan, you really don't deserve to get an offer. If I talked with someone and I were making, making the decision to hire them, and I found that this 273 action items was basically the way they were doing their, their, their search, I probably wouldn't hire them. Because I don't think they know how to invest their time well. They're not a good time manager. They're working hard, but they're not working smart. So the question becomes, how do we move beyond that? And the temptation, it, it's still the same, isn't it? Well, I'll just connect with 273 people. Well, it didn't work quite that way. 
because you, we have to retool why we're doing it. We have to change our mindset from networking in mass to connecting with intentionality and with purpose, or with intention and intent, intent and purpose, so that people know we're not just about us. We're not just working out for ourselves. I have a friend who says this, and, and, and Bill knows the guy. My friend says to me, son, when you don't worry about who gets the credit, good things happen. Connecting is kind of that way. If, if I meet you and we talk and I'm able to refer you to somebody because you need your car fixed and I happen to know a good mechanic, do I benefit from that? Is anybody going to come say, boy, Dwayne got me this? No, but something good happened. I know you found a good vendor. I know that, that he was honest with you. I can trust that. I know you've been taken care of. Didn't care about who gets the credit. That's really important. You say, well, I don't want the credit. I want a job. Well, if you're looking just for a job, you're looking for that credit. And what I find is people who use this 273 approach, this kind of frantic approach, don't get to build a career as much as they get to take a job. And that's a big, that's a, there's a big difference. I know that I'm successful as a coach with people when they have a couple job offers and they can choose from one or two. Rather than them saying, well, I got this job to work at this place and it's not really what I want, but I got to go to work. Okay, that's, that's a stepping stone, but it may not be where you want to be. But the temptation is to just start to, to use this little bit of information we have and just take off networking because we all know the old adage, don't we? Getting a job is not, say it out loud, it's not what you know, but who you know. So I'm going to find people that I know. I'm going to know the right people. Well, let me ask you. When you get into that intense job search, how often do you feel like your closest family members and the people you think would help you find a job suddenly become invisible, don't they? Have you found that? Everybody tells me that's the case. It could be the reason because there's no mutual benefit in it for the other person. Let's think about it. Let's imagine that, now tell me your name again, I'm sorry. Vicki, yeah. Let's imagine that Vicki is my niece. And I've known her since she was a little girl. And she needs a job. And she calls me. She says, Uncle Dunk, my, my nieces and nephews don't call me Uncle Dunk. That's, <laughs> so she says, Uncle Dunk, I need a job. Okay. Vicki, what, what kind of job? Well, I do this, I do that. Well, that's right. That's the kind of work I do. Well, well can, you, can you get me a job? Well, let me work on it, honey. Let me see what I can do. And you never hear back. Is this sounding familiar? Well, there's a lot of risk for good old Uncle Dunk. What if he puts you to work and he gets you a job and you crash and burn? Well, she's your niece. You're going to have to fire her. Oh, man, can you imagine? be awful. There's a lot of risk there. The other thing is your uncle may think of you as a little red-headed girl. He may not be thinking of you as a full-grown adult professional because he doesn't know you like that. So he may pigeonhole you and, and then you miss opportunities. So my, my thought is that finding a job is not about, it's not about what you know or who you know in some respects, it's about who you don't know well. Because you can connect with those people and introduce yourself to them in a mutually beneficial way. You win, they win, and amazing, amazing things start to happen. No secret silver bullet, as they say. You've got to have a plan. But let's talk about that plan and how, as we bring this thing in kind of for a landing, how we could connect with some people that maybe we've never thought about connecting with. Okay, so grab your paper, and here's what I want you to do. If you're not work, if you're not out of work, imagine that you are. Okay, imagine that you are, and you need a job. And what I want you to write on a single sheet of paper is this answer. Respond to this question. List the name of a single place that you would like to work. You're interested in it. You don't know if you want the job there, but you saw this place, and you drive by there every day, and there's always cars there, and it looks like they have good business, 
or you know somebody who told you that they knew somebody who worked there and it really sounded like a good place, or you know that you love that field of work and you think there's a place in my normal chain of travel that I would be near, it's near where I pick up my kid from school or whatever, list that place, all right? So put that place, put the name of that place down on your sheet. If you're having trouble identifying a place, at least identify an industry. You say, I don't know a place. And if you don't, that's another exercise, and we'll work with you on that. We can do that. But first, identify a place or at least an industry. You know, I don't know where I want to work, but I know I want to work in retail. I haven't seen a mechanic shop that, that interests me, but I know I want to work in a mechanic shop. I want to work on vehicles, whatever, all right? So let's see, what'd you list? List what, what places? What'd you list? I work part-time here, but I love the environment here in Jackson College. I would love to work here in the Okay, so with that one, because you already have such intimate knowledge of it, you're here, think of a specific maybe department or role that you would like, okay? And, and think about that. Yeah. yeah, put that down. Well, what'd you put down? Okay, so the business is Caremont, and then the industry is the medical office industry. Okay, and what'd you put if you were working, if you were in the job market? Yeah. Um, here, yeah. And that's a big reason to consider a place because, yeah, but yeah, we're imagining here. So <laughs> yeah. just just for the record, she's she's happily employed. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. If, but that's a big deal. If you start thinking about it, if you have to pick up children or do this or do that, that, that close locale can be a big issue. So here's the next question. Who do I know, draw a circle out beside, draw a circle around the one you did, then a circle around, or around the next one out to the side and circle it. Who do I know, hey, welcome. Who do I know who is directly connected to that business or that place? Who do I know? <coughs> Directly connected. They work there. They, they, they have worked there as recently as the past year. They're, they, they, you know, they're, they, have a, they have a direct inside person. You got somebody? Now here's where you take it just one step further. Because the temptation is to say, who do you know at Gaston that's a good contact? I know several instructors, All right. several so put one of those names. Pull one out. Who would it be? Uh, Which one? Bill Bergen. Okay, so Bill. The temptation is to call Bill and do what? Bill, I, I'm working here. I love it. I need a job. What you got open? What, what you got? Well, Bill may not know. Bill may not be the kind of guy who sticks his neck out for people. You just don't know. So take it one step further and draw another line. Who do I know? that has an indirect connection to that place. Maybe their spouse works there. Maybe you, you, you know they work there, but they've, they've changed jobs. Maybe you know they work there, but you don't know them well. You met them at a barbecue at your brother-in-law's house, and they told you, I work at, I work at Cabarrus Rowan. Oh, really? And that was kind of the extent of it. You remember their name or their face, but that's about it. But you, you know them from a distance. You know they have some tie there. What happens as you start doing this over and over with a few places, you end up with, a, with, with some, a, a, a connectivity chart that looks a lot like this. This belongs to one of our employees. He's given us permission to use this with his full story. I certainly won't share his name. This person had the worst challenge that you can imagine. He had been in prison for sex offense. Unemployable on, on the whole. Uh, sort of an outcast in our society. We connected. He did the exercise. By doing this exercise, he found a job driving a truck, which was his thing. It's what he had done before. He was working and doing well. He was making $9 an hour. Because of his performance 
And the fact that he'd found a job and was performing in it, he got his parole officer to let him get permission to move back to his home state in a neighboring state where he had more connections, where he had a familiarity, but he also had a big offense that carried over that he'd had to, he was going to have to live down. He was able to go back, found a job making $15 an hour, and is as happy as he's ever been in his life. And when I met this guy, I was concerned for his safety. He was so depressed over this, I was afraid he was going to commit suicide. And in the course of six months, he made that big turn. So that's how this can work. But the temptation we, we want to set aside is the temptation to network rather than connect. So let's think about it. Let's say that you want to work at Caremont. Let's just use Caremont as an example. Who do you know that works there? Did you have a direct line in? Do you know anybody? Okay. Did you have an indirect? Did you know somebody who has a connection there, but it's not a direct, they don't work there? I know um, several nurses that may have connections there. Okay. Make up a name or give us the first name of a nurse. Let's press role play this. Let me try it. Okay, Shelly. How do you know her? Okay, let's go, to, let's go outside the family just to, just to keep it a little more honest. And how do you know her? I went to school with her husband. Okay, so you went to school with her husband. Have you talked to her in the last year? Okay, so the temptation would be to call Lisa and go, Lisa, this is Novella. How are you? Look, I have moved back in the area. I am looking for work. What, what you got at Caramel? The chances are, is a nurse going to know? A nurse is worried about patients. He or she's not worried so much about filling jobs. So it's, 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 you kind of put her at a disadvantage when you call and just rush right into it. Think about this model. Lisa, this is Novella Sofri. How are you? Yeah, good, good to talk with you. Listen, your husband Mark and I went to, went to school together. Said, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, good, good to talk to you. Look, I have a couple questions about some career things I'm working on. Do you have five minutes? Yeah, sure. I don't have another appointment for, you don't have to be at work till three o'clock. We can talk. What you need? The reason I'm calling is I'm thinking, I'm going to make some career moves. And I'm thinking about the hospital specifically. What can you tell me about working there? I know you've been there a while. Is it a good place? Is it a, how would I, you know, how would it be? Let her talk. Let her tell you. I said, really? So it sounds like a pretty good place to work. You've been there, what, five years? Yeah. How did, how did you end up there? Well, I knew this person, and I knew that person. I did this. So, so you're, what I'm hearing you is it, it's a pretty good place to work, but it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure. It sounds like the pay's pretty good from what you're saying. How would I go about deciding if that's a place I want to work and then actually making an application? Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to know if it's a place you want to work, um, why don't you come with us? We're all going out for drinks Friday night. Meet us at 5.30, and we'll, I'll introduce you to five or six of my colleagues. Boom. Now you've made a connection. Very simple to do. Maybe you'd go to that, maybe you don't. But then you close with that open-ended question, how would I go about making the connection to go to work there? Well, let me tell you, you go online and you apply, and then you let me know where you applied, and I'll tell you who to call. Just by changing and shifting your, your conversation to connecting, rather than just introducing or networking, you've invested a little bit into a person because you ask her for what? You ask her for personal experience. You ask her for her expertise. You ask her to teach you something. You became the, the student. When working with students, we call that surrendering the one up. Letting the other person have the control rather than trying to control things. So here's my question. How do you think that model would work for you in your effort to find a work. How could you use that? How could you use that? I mean, I, I know, like I said, I know a lot of people here at Jackson.
action, but if I was trying to find somebody indirectly related to that action, uh, or person person that you're directly related to. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how would that, that look? look? Give, Give me, me a name, name of this role play. play. Okay. Bill? Bill? Does that mean again? Yeah. yeah. Bill, this is Cameron. How are you? Yeah. Look, can I swing by your office? I want to ask you something. Yeah, come by about 2.30. I'm finishing class, okay? You stop in. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Look, the reason I'm here, and I won't take much of your time, but the reason I'm here is I love what I'm doing. I really do. I'd like to do more of that or find a permanent role here. How are things here with hiring? Is it a, is it a long, drawn-out process? How does that work? How did you end up here? Let him reply. Let him talk. Let him tell you. If he's maybe a little older than you, and you look to him as a mentor, and you say, how would you feel about recommending your own child to do what I'm doing? Would this be a job you would have him or her pursue? Why or why not? And you talk about that. And then eventually, you're going to get to the point that he's invested enough in you that most people are going to offer some assistance. They're going to say, you go down to personnel and you see this person. Or I tell you what, I know there's a job coming open in this department in three months. Let's talk again in 30 days and let's get you in there before they post that job and I'll find out who you need to talk with. You'll be amazed at how people will help you. So this is my recommendation to you. We have a tool for you if you want to do this. Thinking in terms of connecting instead of just networking. Thinking in terms of a mutually beneficial introduction and relationship. I encourage every job seeker, every career builder rather, to think in terms of building a career, not just finding a job. And identify five places that you have some interest in working. Only five. You say, I gotta, I gotta try more. Well, if you get too big and too wide, you end up just superficially networking. But identify five, and then go through this exercise with each one. Whom do I know that works at that place, has a direct connection? Who do I know who has an indirect connection? And then start making some calls. You call some people, and you go through. Maybe Caremont is number one. Maybe uh, Bryan Center is number two. Maybe uh, CVS Pharmacy is number three. And then maybe there's one that's totally off the wall for number four. Maybe it's a manufacturing job and you want to work in quality control at, at ABC Industries. And then there's number five. You can call and you can talk to your people and you can say, hey, I met you at my brother-in-law's barbecue and we chatted. Oh, yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Look, I, can I just ask you a couple questions? I'm navigating some career changes. You don't have to tell them you're out of work. You don't have to put yourself in that un unfortunate light where they feel like, oh, this guy just needs a job. I'm navigating some career transitions, and I'm thinking about going to work in your industry. I'm thinking about switching industries. Or I'm thinking, I'm at a point I want to either stay in this industry or not, and I'm in this industry now. Tell me about your experience. You just, you just ask and listen. Ask and listen. And let it build into some sort of a relationship that the next thing you know, you've got the opportunity to not just get a job and make some frantic effort, but you've got a chance to do what this guy's doing on the phone right now. He's building relationships. And anybody who knows me will tell you that the strength of what I do in the community is built on the relationships I have. I, I love people. You say, I'm just not a people person. That's okay. You don't have to be something you're not. But if you're not a people person, this will give you a template to help you engage with people without being uncomfortable. You could do this in a way that wouldn't be the way I do it, but that's okay. My way is my way. It's not the only way. And there's, to me, there's nothing more rewarding than a nice, mutually beneficial discussion with somebody where they learn, I learn, and we both do what this says. We get ahead. We don't just get a job. I really don't want you looking for a job. I want you getting ahead. I want you to move to where you want to be. And this book will be out fairly soon. That's why Bill's here. He's helping me edit it. 
And um, we, we already have these materials available in other formats. And if you're interested, there's some things I want to show you, and then we'll do Q&A. Two things. This is a way that you can, you can work with me one-on-one -on -one as, as, a, as a career coach. I will put most of the effort will come from your side. I will coach you. I will not give you recommendations for jobs and all that unless you do your part. And your part is building a plan. Most people that I've dealt with really don't want to go to that degree. They just want to find a job. And unfortunately, they, they find themselves in that situation often. But if you're interested, you can go to Facebook. You can go to this, this site, Getting Ahead, not just Getting a Job. It's a closed group. You request entrance, and I will put you in the, in the, in the group, and we'll begin some of these exercises. I'll give you the links. You can do them, and then we can feed back. There's a place for you to, you can record and send things back and forth. It's a lot of personal interaction. I'll be glad to help you with that. The other thing that I'll show you is, and this is what I hear from a lot of people, Dwayne, I just don't know anybody. I, I don't know people. I, I, you know, we live in an age where, you know, most of my relationships are superficial. They're, they're you know, they're online. They're, they're social media. They're this, they're that. But I don't know a lot of people. If you come to this site and do the exercises, I will give you the exercise for this to take you through 27 categories that there's not a person alive unless they've been living under a rock who cannot find at least 100 connections if you do this exercise. I guarantee you. So you come away from this with a plan with five focus spots that you're, you're searching. You work through those five and you say, well, you know what? Number four is dead. They're in a hiring freeze for six months. Boom, they move down to number six. You plug another one in, and you're always working on those five. So you have a plan now. And you say, well, I've, I've got five, but I just can't make the connections with people. Then you do this exercise, and you come back, and you have a, a chart, like our friend that showed us a while ago, of all your connections. This is just one little piece of his. His was about this big and just filled with connections. And you go through this exercise, and if you do the first part, we'll turn you on to this. And that's, that's how it works. So you come away from this today. If you don't get anything, you've learned how to do a mutually beneficial introduction. It starts with who I am, what I do, or why I'm here, and uh, what kind of question. Open-ended question. We've talked about the difference between networking and really connecting. And the real difference is in the mutual what? The mutual benefit. Both people win. It's a give and take. And then we've talked about how to craft your own plan so that you're not just throwing things at the wall to see what happens. You're not frantic. And you can enjoy the job search. And I suggest to people that even when they land a job, that they use this model to build their, their, their circles of connectivity. Because when you have a job, you're then selling a product. You're then delivering a product. You're then giving a service. But that job may end. And if you have a circle of connectivity, you don't have to go back and rebuild that, reconstruct that. If you see your job start to waffle a little bit and waver, you can begin to, to make those connections so that hopefully before the hammer falls, you're ready to make the transition. And that, that puts you ahead of a lot of, a lot of people because most people are not willing to do this because it's different, and it requires a lot of upfront work. But I'm telling you from experience, out of our 110 people who went through this class and did these exercises, about half of them were really serious about it. So 50, 60 of them really took it seriously. 45 of them went to work within the 12-week period in their industry in good jobs. They didn't just, they had stories like Alan gave us, and again, he's given us permission to share his story. And they're continuing on. And some of them were really disadvantaged. Alan had the, the, the situation we discussed. Others had, had children that, that really, because of their ages, restricted their availability to work. They had to work from 8 till 3. They couldn't work second. They couldn't do this. But they found work. And they connected instead of just networking. So I hope that's helpful. I'd love to take some Q&A and just, um, just see what questions you have. Yes, sir. Something I've had, uh, 
I don't know, you, you might be able to help with this. Is there's been situations where I've applied for a job mm -hmm. and a week, week or two might go by and I just want to follow up. Yeah. But I don't want to, I don't want to be like I'm getting, like I might call two weeks later and they'll yeah. say, oh, we're reviewing applications. They look, yeah. They're kind of ambiguous on the phone. They're yeah. not saying, oh, we're not hiring, we are hiring. Yeah. And then two weeks pass by, and I'll just call and check again. Yeah. How, how would you recommend going about this? Mm -hmm. There are two little factors there. One is, and this, this sounds like an indictment, but it's just a reality. Our middle managers in America are probably the weakest middle manager we've ever seen. Not because they're bad but because big corporations have disempowered them. You, can't, you can hardly go into a store, a big store, a corporate store, a Target, this or that, and get a manager to really make a decision because he or she has to get somebody to approve that. They just have been disempowered. That makes it really tough with hiring. So let's talk about one of those. Give me the name of one, and you can pick one up or whatever that you can apply to. Uh, books okay, so you applied to Books a Million. I would suggest that you do what? Based on our model, what would be the first thing? You would look for a direct or an indirect connection there? Which? Well, a direct oh, first. Oh, oh, right, See if you know somebody inside. Oh, yeah. you know? And it may be as simple as starting once a week, twice a week, to go in there and start reading a book, be in the store, and start meeting some people. But you look for that direct. If you don't have that indirect, you start thinking about the indirect. Who do I know in that business that were in that job and that works for, that knows somebody who works there? Maybe I know the barista over at Joe Mugs and her her boyfriend works in Books of Million or whatever. I would say use the same model. Connect with one of those people and, and inquire. Tell me something. I applied to Books a Million about a month ago. I've not heard a word. What's the process like? What's that like? When you were hired, how did, was that normal? Do you think I'm dead in the water? What, what do you think? Get their input. And that's a conversation. If you go in there and read books, you start meeting a few people, you could ask that of any employee. You could say to them, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, kind of put your hat in your hand. Same model, but you... you you make them the expert. And then usually, somebody will say it. They'll say, well, let me check on that. I can ask. Our manager knows the district manager. They, they come in, let me, let me ask. And now you've kind of started things moving. And um, you, don't, you don't get buried in that C stack. So same model, just a little bit different approach. What other questions? If you're asking questions, I know you're learning. If you don't have a question, answer me this question, if you will. What can you take from here and how can you use it and what you've learned today? So either ask me if you have a question or tell me if you will, tell the group, I, I can use this. This is how I can use it. Anybody? Um, my, I probably won't the same question in a month, but the majority of my connections are in Huntersville. Yeah. And since I relocated to this area, my connections from here, I mean, they're good people, but they're all like little Eeyore. It's all yeah. Yeah. no home. Yeah. Yeah. Know, so yeah. it's kind of frustrating at times because yeah. people in Hershville don't really know the connections down here. Yeah. What you may do is first, I would say the first piece is to identify those five places on your first target. Then look for the direct, look for the indirect, and if you really feel that your indirects are so weak, maybe go through the action, try it, and then get with somebody like me and say, let's talk about this, because then you, you put some effort into it, you have some things to work with, and we may be able to find you some good connections here. Or you may find that your people in Huntersville know people here. That may be what you ask them. Who do you know that works here? Who do you know that works in this industry? And you make that, you, you connect the, the dots. So, yeah, I, I understand that. There's some people that you think they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're just, they're just the kind of people who do their job, you know? yeah. so, or maybe don't. So, yeah. But how, how can you use this? How can your students use this? What can, what can they take from this and, and utilize? And is it, is it radically different from what you think they're doing, or is it just a, 
a little bit of an adjustment. Do you know? Um, I think our students probably don't use that at all. Okay. I think they're scared and intimidated by the connections and the networking type setting. Yeah. Um, so I would need to talk with them more about trying to build those okay. relationships. And yeah. Not trying to just rush them. This is who I am. I need job. Yeah. 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 But, and I find I probably do that myself as well. I'm a great networker. I'm all about me. Yeah. <laughs> and just never thought, you know, so much that I need to to ask them more questions yeah. and build, you know, mutual things. See, I used to hate going to a cocktail party. I hated that. I thought that was like purgatory. But when I changed my thinking to this model, I love those things now because I get to meet 10, 12 new people, learn a little bit about each one, and I feel at the end of the night like I've just, just feasted on the knowledge of people. So it, it, it is a mind shift, there's no doubt. St. Francis said this. He says, seek first to understand than to be understood. That's a really good motto. I have a Saint Fran I'm not Catholic, but I have a St. Francis statue in my in my yard that my kids gave me for, for Father's Day one year. And that's one reason. Every day when I pull out, that's the last thing I see. And I think, listen first, talk second. And Bill will tell you, he's known me for a number of years. That's not easy for me. I love to talk. So, but it, it's something I'm learning to do. So thank you for your time. Um, I have taken an hour, and that's what I intended to take. I didn't want to eat up your whole morning. So I appreciate your time and your input. You are welcome to come to the website on Facebook, friend me, or just come into the site, whichever you prefer. It's called Getting Ahead, Not Just Getting a Job. And um, we'll, we can get the ball rolling, all right? Thank you very much. This is where you clap loudly. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Is that helpful? Good. Good. Um,